Hello, I'm Rosie Oakes. Welcome to Mostly Climate. In autumn 2021, the UK saw its third warmest autumn on record. And apart from October, which was rather wet, September and November were also drier than average. To understand seasonal trends, climate science works on longer timescales. However, autumn 2021 perhaps represents a trend that is showing up in climate projections. Today, we're joined by Dan Cotterell, who is a climate scientist at the Met Office, and he has just published a paper on how weather patterns in the UK are changing, focusing on the transition from summer to autumn. Hi, Dan. Hi, Rosie. So meteorologically in the UK, we divide our seasons neatly into month groups. And within each season, we categorise these similar climatic trends. Dan, in your latest research, you have found that some of these seasonal transitions are shifting. Our latest work shows that UK autumns are likely to become drier and more summer-like in terms of weather conditions with less stormy winter-type weather that we see more in winter. And this is a change that we are likely to begin seeing perhaps over the next 10 years. What inspired you to do this study about changing seasonal patterns in the UK? Well, one of the things um, I noticed when we were looking into extreme rainfall in autumn was that actually September was acting slightly differently to the rest of autumn in the future. We're seeing almost a change in some of the rainfall patterns. This is basically what encouraged me to have a look at weather patterns and see whether there was some seasonality behind it. Can you just describe to me what is a weather pattern, just so that everybody knows what we're talking about here? So a weather pattern basically sort of describes how uh, atmospheric circulation occurs over over sort of the North Atlantic European domain. And it's basically about the movement of air masses and different weather patterns bring slightly different weather characteristics to the UK. Weather patterns are used in medium to long term weather forecasting to sort of predict kind of what weather conditions we expect. Okay, so in your paper, you mentioned that there are 30 weather patterns. So within that, are there an equal number of weather patterns for each season? Or are there, for example, much more weather patterns in the summer than in the winter, for example? That's a good question. So the 30 weather patterns range from 1 to 30 and lower numbered weather patterns, the sort of patterns with weaker mean sea level pressure anomalies, and are those that tend to occur more in summer. And then near the higher weather patterns, ones like 30, for example, are sort of quite stormy weather patterns and occur more in winter. And what, we, what we're seeing in this research is we're seeing more of those lower numbered weather patterns in autumn and less of those higher numbered weather patterns. So in your research, you don't just look at kind of the past climate and what's going on now, but you try and project this into the future. So can you tell us a bit about how you did that, maybe what climate models you decided to use or what scenarios for the future? We used a number of different climate models from a number of global institutions. So we use climate models from Europe, from Japan, from the US and also here at the Met Office. Um, and we also use the UK climate projections to sort of capture man-made influence on climate. Um, we examined a low emission scenario, so one where the world is unlikely to go above two degrees. And one very extreme example, if, for example, emissions were to remain unchecked, we looked at the emission scenario for that as well. And um, what we find in our research when we look into the future, so what we do is we sort of compare a past period, sort of before 2000, and we compare a period at the end of uh, this century. And what we find is at the end of this century, we expect English regions to be approximately 4 to 12 percent drier in autumn. And this is due to changes in seasonality and weather patterns. So was the is the 4 percent then from the low emissions scenario and the 12 percent from the high emissions or what kind of makes up that range? Yes, yeah, so the 4% the um, percent is basically from if we keep emissions below 2 degrees, but high emission scenarios may be closer to 12%. That's really interesting. Your paper also talks a bit about storminess. So how is storminess in autumn projected to change in the future? 
Yeah, so in this one, I didn't really focus on wind at all. I mainly looked at rainfall. Okay. Um, but what we do see is that these sort of higher weather patterns that tend to bring stormy conditions to UK are occurring less in autumn in the future. So we can perhaps expect, on average, for autumn, sort of slightly less storms. Okay. And then do these come back in the winter or was there not a clear signal for that? Yeah, so the, the these sort of changes that we're seeing in autumn are not being seen in winter. This is a seasonal extension of the summer as such. And most of these changes will most likely occur in September. Okay. And, and why is this work important for the UK? Seasonality has a big influence on a number of industries. I mean, energy, um, agriculture, and I mean, this latest work, for example, which looks at how autumns are likely to come drier in the future. It's obviously very relevant for drought as well. If we're seeing hotter, drier summers, and if we're additionally seeing warmer, drier autumns, uh, this could exacerbate the drought risk. Yeah, and like you say, that then has impact across lots of different sectors. This seems like a really important contribution to the field. So um, what's next for you science-wise? What are you working on right now? So right now, actually, we're continuing some earlier work where we looked at extreme rainfall events in the UK. And what we really want to do is be able to translate changes in rainfall into changes in flood impacts, because rainfall does not necessarily equal flooding. Flooding is impacted by a number of other variables, for example, how much it's rained before we see the extreme rainfall event or land use um, and other factors. So we're really keen on trying to see whether the changes we're seeing into extreme rainfall translate into flood impacts. And are you working with any partners on that or is that just a Met Office study? Yeah, so this particular study, I'm actually working with um, the University of Bristol. Um, I'm currently doing a PhD there while working at the Met Office. Oh, wow, busy. <laughs> yeah. And um, yeah, I'm working with some of the hydrologists there to look at how we can translate changes in rainfall into flood impacts. Okay. Oh, that's great. Yeah, we've talked on previous podcasts about the importance of climate scientists working with other specialists, you know, in this kind of transdisciplinary research. So when we combine the climate science with other fields, for example, hydrological modelling, like you're talking about, the impact of the work can be much higher as well. So it sounds like a really good study and we'll have to have you back on once you finish that, that work, Dan, and you can tell us all about it. Thank you, Rosie. It's been good speaking to you. Mostly Climate is a podcast by the UK Met Office. For the latest weather conditions where you are, download the Met Office weather app.